anyway, welcome back to Jaxta's Homestuck. Today we have, I forgot to make sure you go by iMac before starting this. Do you go by iMac or something else? Uh, yeah, that's that's fine. Okay, I cool. <laughs> I meant to do that prior to this and I did not. Um, yeah, so I have iMac here who, if you don't know, is uh, the writer and artist for House of Dirk a fanfic fan venture thing that has swept the Homestuck community. So uh, yeah, iMac, why don't you introduce yourself? Say your pronouns and stuff. Uh, hi, I'm iMac. I go by they, them. Uh, I, I do Homestuck fan fiction stuff that I guess has gotten like a little popular for some <laughs> strange reason. Um, and it's good to be here on the show. How's it going? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, it's it's definitely gotten pretty popular. It's, I mean, it's really good. It makes sense. Um, I've definitely been getting as many people into it as I can. Um, why don't you explain a bit what the plot is about? Okay, uh, House of Dirk is an absurdist 50s rom-com AU in which uh, Dirk and Caliborn from the popular webcomic Homestuck are, uh, are married. <laughs> and uh, they're trying to host Dave and Carcat uh for this like dinner party thing but everything goes terribly wrong and then everything just the whole universe kind of collapses in on itself and it's a very meta uh story so yeah that's <laughs> it's it's hard to explain uh with just a sentence since yeah, <laughs> the, whole, yeah the whole thing is kind of like you read it and you expect one thing and it's sort of takes a complete left turn and that's kind of what it's about is uh luring the viewer in with one thing and giving them something else yeah and you do a really good job of it but uh we're lured in wanting one thing and we are given what we need so yeah it works out. I, i'd like i'd like to think uh i'm, I'm trying to to do that anyways but yeah. it's it's definitely i think the one thing i didn't really expect from it was I purposely picked a kind of rare pair. Uh, Dirk and Caliborn weren't the most popular ship. I think partially because Caliborn isn't like an anime boy, so people don't really, <laughs> like typically ship him with other people that often. Uh, so I was surprised to see that House of Dirk led to this like I guess renaissance is the word people use of Dirk and Caliborn shipping. Uh, so that's been a really interesting like byproduct of the fic. Yeah, I mean, it's a good ship for so many reasons. Um, I, I, you know, like like you said, it hasn't been super popular. Um, I've only read one or two other good fics uh, that are Dirk and Caliborn. And it's, they have such a great dynamic, especially when they're tearing apart the, the meta narrative. Yeah, and I, I think they have a lot of similarities as characters. Uh, this was something even mentioned in the epilogues where, Callie is like oh you're kind of like my brother to Dirk yeah uh, and you don't see that explored too often or how they sort of work together since uh Dirk is kind of the only like I guess Jake a little bit but mostly Dirk is, is the only alpha kid that really helps Caliborn back in canon so yeah they, they have a lot of potential for some sort of positive relationship there like as much as either of them are capable of experiencing i think <laughs> yeah I, I wouldn't call it like a, a happy romance but it's it's something they have some sort of spark going on there that is something i've wanted to explore in a fic so yeah so is that you just sat down one day and were like i want to write dirk and caliborn and then you just came up with this or well uh i had the idea for Dirk and Caliborn being in some sort of gruesome sitcom environment uh, since they were first introduced as characters. Awesome. Uh, so, so I've sort of shifted since like they first had their first uh, weird art sharing conversation that that classic moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I just thought that they had a lot of like comedy potential uh, as a duo. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't until the epilogues that I was actually inspired to write something, I guess, which is is one of the good things I think the epilogues brought on was that burst of creativity that I felt the need to, like, respond somehow. Uh, and those characters seemed the most fitting to tell the kind of narrative I wanted to tell. 
So, so yeah, that's what I did or am doing. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, so do you have like a whole like big plot lined out or kind of more taking it as you go? Uh, a little of column A, a little of column B. Mm -hmm. um, I think the beginning, I wanted to feel very improvisational to sort of match Homestuck's early tone. Uh, so it was a lot of like feeling it out as I go along. But as I get more into it, I have more things plotted out. I have like larger arcs planned and stuff like that. Uh, the goal is to keep the fic going on for exactly a year. Oh. So we'll see if I can actually do that. I might go shorter. I might go longer. But that's the that's the tentative plan at the moment. Oh, that's super exciting. So we have plenty of content coming up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll go on so long, you'll probably get sick of it at some point. But yeah, that's... We've been with Homestuck for 10 years. I don't... <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, just don't stop ever. Yeah, no, and uh, the way you write it, like, um, people are saying it kind of like I, I see people say the same thing about that Detective Pony fanfic. I'm like, no, this is canon. It it's not technically in the Homestuck canon, but it is as canon as anything can get. I've I've gotten that uh, where people say it it feels homestuckish even though it's so far removed from the plot yeah uh, and that's a really huge compliment because i definitely think i'm i'm trying to sort of mimic the tone and like storytelling style of homestuck while telling like my own story and also trying to represent the characters as well as i can within this yeah. like weird environment uh so that's a big compliment when people say that yeah, because it, it does feel like it doesn't feel like someone's copying Homestuck. It feels like it's your own story that happens to be a part of Homestuck now. Thank you. I mean, Homestuck sort of with this whole like everything is canon in, in a way. Um, I think it's allowed for a lot of projects uh, to sort of fit nicely alongside Homestuck, even if they're not technically canon. It's like they, they kind of are uh, just because people accept them as canon like if, if they become like I guess renowned enough uh people just say like yeah this is this is the accepted view of these characters or something like that like yeah. I think De Detective Pony is one of those ones where people just say like this is Dirk this is what he wrote like it's yeah just yeah and not not to go on the topic of Detective Pony but Detective Pony is a good one because there's nothing in canon that directly contradicts it like yeah exactly it's for all you know, that could be exactly what he wrote. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it would it would be very bad of of Hussey, I think, to try and go and write his own Detective Pony at this point, just because yeah. that exists. Yeah, but um, yeah. sometimes you get content like that that's just so it just makes sense. One of the things that inspired me was um, Prom Stuck from back in the day, and that's yes. something that's such a like a bizarre nowhere near canon alternate universe but it still feels weirdly canon just because the characters act so consistently that you just kind of accept everything that's going on as as some strange like offshoot timeline or something it just it just feels like it fits snugly in with uh what homestuck story is yeah definitely so um so i've been in the homestuck fandom technically for a while but i never really interact with the fandom i just kind of like enjoyed it off to the side so now I'm like actually getting into the fandom stuff. And I just read Prom Stuck last month. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. So, so yeah, no, that was, that was an absolutely fantastic read. And if you haven't read uh, Prom Stuck, you have to go read it. Cause... Yeah. I think some of the stuff is a little dated just for like, you know, John Cat being the main ship. And that's something nobody talks about anymore. Yeah. Uh, because of you know recent developments but it's it's still a nice piece of fandom history I think if people are interested in exploring it I definitely recommend it yeah and you know John Cat's shippers still have rights personally I'm John Dave Cat all the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah all you know most I was gonna say all but that's not true most ships have rights I think yes absolutely um but yeah so yeah there's just I'm always amazed at the wonderful creative things that that you guys are able to come up with, like all you Homestuck creators, um, which, uh, by the way, I should say your stuff is on uh, 
AO3 You're cutting out a bit. Not I can't else. quite hear you. Whoops. Sorry about that. I don't know if it's my internet or what. Um, but your uh, House of Dirk that's on AO3, or do you also have it on, um, what is it, MSPF? Um, I originally posted it on MSPFA, MSP Fan Adventures. Yeah. That was that was the original place uh, it was. And then I took it off and put it on AO3. And now I'm putting it back on MSPFA just because some people kind of prefer that format. So, so some people yeah. are just allergic to fan fiction in general. So it kind of um, <laughs> disguises the fact that it's a fan fiction when it's on that site. Uh, I feel like it gives it this, you know, a AO3 has so many good like so much good content on there but some people just don't like fan fiction for whatever reason and prefer it if it's like in a a comic format I guess yeah uh, so I just want to provide both options in case people kind of prefer one over the other for sure um have you you've had a lot of crazy things happen already in this comic has there been anything that you've gotten the strongest reactions to, whether like positive or negative? Okay, uh, <laughs> I got a pretty strong reaction when I killed off Hal, uh, who I only introduced in one chapter and then killed him off within the same chapter. Yeah. Uh, which was on purpose, <laughs> but so, some people grew very attached to him uh, in that short period of time and were not terribly pleased that his time with us was so short. Yeah. Uh, so th so that was interesting. I got some very fun comments um for that. But the way you did it, doesn't that make everything better? Hey, to be fair, I brought him back later, so Yeah. yeah the Hal the Hal fans have rights for sure. Uh, yeah. But he he just had to go for a little bit. <laughs> no, that makes that makes sense. Uh it's it's so good like I'm I'm trying to because I don't I'm in between about how much spoilers I want on here because really this is something that people have to experience for themselves though if I say a duck's disappearance is a major plot point that doesn't make any goddamn sense outside of context no part part of the point of House of Dirk uh was to make it kind of like Homestuck in the sense that it is impossible to recommend to anyone like like if you try to recommend Homestuck to a friend you just say, oh, it's about kids who play a game or something, but you can't really get into what happens. Yes. Uh, I'm trying to make House of Dirk similarly convoluted, where uh, <laughs> if someone tries to describe it to a friend, it's it's almost impossible to sort of explain what exactly it is without sounding uh, very bizarre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you're doing that pretty well. Yeah, and, and that's part of the fun, uh, to sort of experience it for yourself but it, it makes it hard to sort of like spread it around i think the way it's spread the most lately is people uh showing like screen caps of moments and stuff like that and i think that's like sparked some interest yeah definitely uh because your art style is so good and everyone just has such chemistry on page <laughs> like Thank there's you. just so many great situations that they all find themselves in and that's that's part of it of what makes it feel like canon homestuck because it's not the same style as homestuck but it's still like a homestuck-esque style i appreciate that uh the style was very much like developed out of necessity i think uh because i make these very quickly so yeah. i had to i had to make a style that was just really easy for me to draw very quickly uh which is why I use a lot of like photo collage and stuff like that. And why most of it's in black and white mm -hmm. uh, just, just so I can chug them out faster. Uh, but it, it works, I think for what it needs to convey. For sure. And yeah, I'm going to give you a chance to, to show your stuff at the end too, but I do just want to say, do you still have uh, commissions open? Oh, uh, at the moment I'm still finishing up uh, my last batch. So gotcha. Yeah. They're, they're closed at the moment, but okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, definitely keep an eye out for if those commissions open back up because I definitely had to get in there and get some. Uh, all right, I, I got the one and it was very great and was my most popular post on Twitter. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you for the support. Like, it's it really helps. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Like, I mean, your, your stuff's good. And that's what I'm spending this whole episode talking about is just fangirling over your stuff. I, I hugely appreciate it. I'm like, I try to, I'm just doing my thing, you know, <laughs> but it, it really means a lot 
to know that people like connect with my work. Yeah. Um, Cause I'm sure you know this by now. And if people are listening to this and don't know this by now about me, I love Dirk Strider so goddamn much. Um, and you write him very, very well. And it's very, very nice to see. Well, thank you. He's, he's definitely not, he's kind of close to the way I talk naturally. Uh, so in some ways he's easy to write, but in other mm. ways he's very, very difficult to write. Yeah. There's a lot of nuances. And I think one of the things that sort of determines whether or not someone's going to like House of Dirk is if they like Dirk as a character. Yes. Uh, because P- if you don't like Dirk, you're not going to like House of Dirk. And if you Yeah, do- if you don't like Dirk, why would you look at something that's called House of Dirk and say, I will read that? Yeah, it's it's probably just not going to be for you if you just hate the character. And I totally understand that because I hate him too. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but it's it's very much a character study of him and Caliborn, who are both kind of controversial characters. Um, yeah. So, you know, and but I have had some people who have told me that reading house of dirk makes dirk tolerable so that's been a very high compliment some people it's sort of turned some people uh to being like slight dirk tolerators not supporters but like (laughs) dealing with him uh he's he's not the easiest person to understand so he's not yeah yeah for some people that's all you can ask is well slightly tolerate him maybe yeah but I, I like it that people who don't like Dirk and people who love Dirk both love your Dirk. Yeah, that I really appreciate that. Uh, I don't think I quite write Dirk the way he is in canon. Um, but I, I try to give my own spin on him that sort of uh, amplifies the, the traits of him that I see. For sure, like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um... And it's it's nice. It's nice seeing the his thought process on getting married to Caliborn and his interactions with uh with Dave and oh my god, his interactions with Carcat, few as they may have been. Uh, yeah, he um like I guess I don't know if this is spoilery, but I definitely have more interactions with him and Carcat planned. Uh, fantastic. Because that's that's something I don't think Canon ever really got into and is a bit of a weird um dynamic to sort of think about how he would get along with Karkat it is um, especially as Karkat being someone who's potentially going to become a part of the Strider family depending on if you know Dave and Karkat got married or something like that he's he's sort of a de facto Strider in a way uh, yes and that's that's something Dirk I feel like would have some trouble coming to terms with uh sort of letting his his little group like expand and and let more people in yeah i mean you know whenever you grow up being surrounded by ocean and only knowing three other people for 16 years (laughs) i can i can see it being harder to accept more people exactly yeah like and car gets so loud too (laughs) (laughs) car cat is a lot of a person he he's a lot and he I think he's pretty perceptive too. Uh you know, some people don't always give him credit, but I, I think he's a he's a pretty sharp dude. And I think mm-hmm. he'd probably see a bit through Dirk's shtick, because he's dealt with Dave, you know, long yes. enough. And yeah. I think I think he's used to seeing those defenses. Uh he can translate strider bullshit. Yeah, but that doesn't mean Dirk's not gonna be awful to him anyways. <laughs> Yeah, but it'll be fun to see. There's so much going on in this. I'm so excited that it's going on and to have you on to talk about it. Yeah, th- thanks for having me on. It's it's great to get to talk about, uh, I guess, my magnum opus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no. Yeah, it's, it's great. And it was funny because I messaged you at the same time you filled out the form. Yeah, it was like <laughs> the, the same second, I think, I saw your message pop up i was in the middle of like filling out the form yeah so it works out like that so that works out yeah um and you've also said uh, i saw on twitter that you might start working on one of your own fan ventures or well i mean this is your own fan venture but like more original yeah um that's probably not going to be for a long while um it's it's something i want to put into 
development, I guess, but I don't I don't think I'd actually like produce anything for it until after House of Dirk's done. Cause that I have... makes sense. So yeah, we have a year. <laughs> yeah, we have a year. <laughs> but yeah. you know, uh, I like to have, you know, multiple irons in the fire, so to speak. So yeah. <laughs> keep your options open. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely fair. Um yeah, uh, did you uh, do you have any other projects that maybe people don't know about um, besides House of Dirk? Not really. Uh, House of Dirk is like kind of the first thing that I've put out on the internet. Uh, e everything else I've done has just been like quiet, you know, private stuff that I keep to myself. So this is this is the first project that uh, I'm really putting out there. Yeah, well, that's exciting. Your first project out there and everyone's just clamoring for it. It's like I it's it's been about as nice of a reception as it could be for what it is, which is a Durku fan fiction in 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think, you know, the fact it's gotten the audience it has uh, it really means a lot to me. Um, I, I don't think it's ever going to be like unanimously. Uh, like beloved just because of its sort of controversial nature but yeah. I, I think the people who have uh reacted to it have like really enjoyed it I've gotten a lot of people saying like it's really I think the best compliment I I get is when people say uh it reminded them of what they like about Homestuck which is like you know that's just huge it's the best thing I could probably hope to do with a fan work yeah, for sure. It's yeah, that's a huge compliment, and I I definitely see it. It's it's so very good. I because <laughs> it it deals with the meta narrative. It deals with with just fucking with things and just interesting combinations of characters saying shit. Uh, like I'd never considered the possibility of Dave and Caliborn uh, interacting, and we get that. Yeah, and uh, that's an interaction that's kind of tough to write, just because it's it's very hostile. Yeah. Uh, just you you have a lot of this like oh you were supposed to kill me in another life and I was supposed to kill you and it's it's just awkward so that's it's it's an interesting dynamic to explore for sure but uh I, I think people forgive Caliborn a lot for how kind of awful he is to Dave just because Dave hasn't really uh reacted to negatively yeah yeah dave uh no car cats really are straight man in this oh yeah yeah for sure car cats sort of the um the voice of reason the sort of uh the the only one being like all of you are acting insane uh yeah. and i'm the only one here that that is being reasonable but he's also not you know totally reasonable either yeah. i think yeah. i think the one thing that uh I, I wish I could do more in House of Dirk is include like all of the characters but Homestuck is just so massive because I have people saying like oh you know I'd love to see this character in House of Dirk or I'd, I'd love to see that character and I would love to just include them all but there's so many <laughs> there's just so many there's so many characters like yeah. even like some what we call like the core characters it, people usually say that's all the kids and then all the uh, Alternian trolls, and that's 20 characters. It's a lot. Just, yeah, there's so many. <laughs> I can barely juggle like five, so. Yeah. Like, there's a lot more I plan to introduce, but. For sure. Uh, you know, it takes time. It takes, I want to do every character I do include justice, so. Yeah. But you just, you just can't, you just can't have them all, unfortunately. But the nice thing, the nice thing is the fandom's so like large and creative. Um, you have to sort of like divide up the characters to different like factions of the fandom, I guess. So you have some people that are like exclusively talking about Jade, for example, and exploring her character, and then you have other people that are exclusively talking about like Dirk and his mm -hmm. character. And I don't know, it's it's like a divide and conquer type thing for getting the whole fandom to come together and kind of understand the yeah. massive past. And um, then we have those who sacrifice themselves to be uh, 
before and and uh ancestor fans oh and they're they're extremely brave i have a lot of respect for them <laughs> i know i'm like i don't know anything about these characters please inform me yeah but but they're out there there's there's people that really care about the ancestors and i, I think that's awesome because yeah they get enough uh like talk about them yeah exactly they they need more uh understanding and people dedicated to them and more popular in the the fandom so we can just get out of our core like eight characters or whatever yeah unfortunately i'm on the um dirk and caliborn ship who are <laughs> you know i love them but they also suck a little they're just yeah they're a little evil so you know yeah i uh to be honest i really only got super into dirk back in march maybe um it was very very shortly before the epilogues came out i suddenly got really really into dirk oh wow it's like you had so a premonition it's i had a premonition that said hey this character will cause you immense pain if you care about them a lot before the epilogues come out yeah um, it's like wow <laughs> yeah dirk tends to do that he tends to sort of hijack people's brains for a bit yeah so, and and that's me before it was like Carcat a lot in Dave and I don't think I'm really obsessed about just one one character and now it's just like that's it it's all it's all Dirk here yeah Dirk um it's it's really interesting Dirk has um more than one extremely meta strange fan fiction out there uh yeah. I I don't know what it is about him that sort of makes and this was before the epilogues that people were writing stuff like Detective Pony and Theater of Cruelty so yeah. I, he just has an effect on people, I guess. <laughs> he does. Um, but yeah, but this isn't just a Dirk episode. I just always turn it into one. Uh, was there anything else about um, your fic that you wanted to talk about? Hmm. Um, it's, it's out there. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting how it sort of got its audience just because I didn't have a social media presence or anything. I just quietly posted it on AO3, didn't yeah. advertise it, didn't do anything for it. You just put um, it out there. You're like that dream that everyone has. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I think it's sort of important for people to know that I had no like background, I guess, uh, when I made it. So like, it, if someone out there has like a project they want to do and they're worried like, oh, you know, what if people don't like it or I'm not popular enough to sort of post it? Just go for it because yeah. the audience will find it if there's an audience out there for it. And there usually is for just about everything. Uh, they'll find it. It doesn't yeah. hurt to advertise it, but but the people will find it if it connects with them. For sure. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I What I want in this Homestuck Renaissance is to just everyone... I mean, and not even just in Homestuck, but in like life in general. But we're talking about Homestuck, so yeah. But, uh, if you if you have a project, just do it. Like just, I have it, friends who are like, I want to make a, z a zine. I want to do this. I want to do this. I'm like, well, let's do it. Like, yeah. Like Homestuck's a great environment to sort of just like practice your skills and put stuff yeah. out there. Mo most of the time, I think people are very receptive to just about any kind of content. So if if you have something you want to say, uh, just say it, put it out there, and you know you'll find people that like what you have to say. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, where all can we find you? Uh, I'm I married a cherub, all one word, uh, on Twitter and archive of our own, uh, and Discord. Um, yeah, those those are my main places, mostly Twitter. Yeah. Um, and you have uh, a coffee that I will link. Uh, I'll have you send me the links to that so I can have it all in the episode description for everyone. And um, and yeah, so um, I, I guess I did forget to ask, are you planning on updating uh, House of Dirk on any, is it any sort of schedule or just like when you get an update out? I'm working on something kind of large at the moment. So Okay, gotcha. It's, yeah. It's gonna take a bit. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's the whole homestuck pattern. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that's that's very exciting. So keep an eye on House of Dirk on AO3, and uh, you said it's on uh, MSPFA. Um, yeah. So I will have the links to that, and and yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I'm excited to have you on, and um, excited to see more from you in the future. Especially if this is your your first kind of venture into online projects. Like, I mean, what are you gonna do next, right? Yeah, thank, thanks so much for having me. Uh, it's always nice to talk about what I'm working on. For sure. And uh, yeah, uh, before I forget, thank you to my patron, Kansas Just Scott Gayer, who I always forget, but we're friends, so that's okay. And I will see you guys. There won't be a bonus episode this Saturday because I have family coming in, so I'll see you guys uh, next Wednesday. Bye.